hey, it's Friday night. It's time to pray. I have a good praise report. I got a text from Diane Jackson just now, and she said that her uh, family members are doing very well. They're recovering. Praise God. They're out of uh, as much uh, discomfort as they were having with COVID, and they are doing so much better. So I just want to give God the glory and the praise for that, for that good report. Also, uh, tonight, Sabrina Williams is asking that we remember her. Lift her up in prayer tonight. <clears throat> Someone else I can't remember. Um, Carolyn Allen is recovering nicely. She had a procedure this week, and so we are praising God in her recovery. Um, we, uh, we have a couple of announcements uh, about a couple of people passing. We'll do that a little bit later, but I just want to say... Thank God, praise God for his glory and his mercy and his, his grace. I was just on uh, FaceTime with uh, our son Mike and Katrin and uh, Oscar and Alistair, and they were pulling through, <laughs> they were pulling through a place to get some donuts, and they were so excited. The kids were super excited. Mike and Katrin were too, but they were playing it off. And uh, then they called me back and they said, Guess what they're out of? And I said, donuts with sprinkles, because that's always Oscar's choice. And he, was, he said, Mike said, no, they're out of donuts. So I said, hey, where are you? Asking, are you at Dunkin' Donuts or what? And Alistair leaned forward and she said, we're in Georgia, Nanny. <clears throat> so Krispy Kreme did not have any donuts, evidently, tonight. But um, it's, a, it's a good night <laughs> To, I'm, I'm sure people are starting to get out, look at the Christmas lights, get out and look at the uh, various things to be seen. Uh, Christmas is very, very different this year. Very, very different. We've been talking today uh, with our children about how we're going to celebrate Christmas. And it's, it's going to be on Zoom. And then Steve and I are going to go to the three local kids' houses and Christmas carol them. Sit in the parking lot. In yeah, set out in the driveway and Christmas carol them. So, you know what, though? Christmas is Christmas, and it's exciting. And even though Oscar didn't get to have his donut with sprinkles, they were getting ready to go through a, a light show area like uh, here, that they have at King's Dominion, and they were so excited. Christmas is exciting, and it's a wonderful time of year. It's a time for Thanksgiving. It's a time for praise. It's a time when you can be in the stores if you're out and about. And they're playing Christmas carols. They're playing joy to the world. A Savior is born in the Christmas stores. And people who have not been in church in 30 years are pushing their carts and they're singing Christmas songs. I, I just love this time of year. It's just, it's just a great time of year. We might not have uh, a white Christmas. We might have a wet Christmas. It's pouring down rain here right now. But I'm going to tell you, whatever our Christmas looks like, however our Christmas looks like this year, we're giving thanks to the Lord above. We're thanking God for this time. This probably isn't when Jesus was really born. But this is the time we celebrate. This is the time we join together. And all over the world, people celebrate Christmas. Because we don't. We don't celebrate the day, we celebrate the birth. That's right. That's right. That's, That's a big exactly difference. Right. Big difference. So uh, I just saw that Frida is asking that we pray for her with her knees. Listen, I'm praying for you, girl. Yeah. Um, big point of prayer for us, and uh, we're just believing. We're just believing. And Diane, I was just telling everyone your good news. Praise God. Praise God. Carolyn. We're just believing that God will completely heal you, completely restore your body and touch you. We're also asking that you use wisdom and rest and do the things you're supposed to do and um, let God do his perfect work in his perfect timing. I saw something today that just kind of ignited a refreshed feeling, warmth, and joy of Christmas. Uh, I received a photograph of the stage at National. Oh, yeah. 
and Angela had decorated. She, you know, she normally decorates the sanctuary for, for Christmas. <clears throat> I told her not to invest that much time in it this year, but just to spruce up the stage and maybe the lobby a little bit. And she sent to me a picture. Oh, it's so And beautiful. it was wonderful. Yeah. And so uh, I sent out, you know, I don't know if I can, hold on, let's see here. I, I smiled, and, you know, my heart smiled. Angela sent um, Merry Christmas from National Church of God. And I was like, oh, my goodness. There it is. Okay, I'm going to try this. See if it works. Yeah. Does it work? Isn't yeah, that beautiful? That is so pretty. She's she, got such a, she, a flair. She does. She went out and she bought all those poinsettias and got everything set up. And they've been doing Christmas trees. And yeah. she's got some Christmas trees all around the building with lights on them. And Angela... You just you just make everything just perfect, and thank you so much. You don't just make our day; you make our season. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Now, now it's Christmas. The church is decorated. <laughs> now it's Christmas. Uh, years ago, I had somebody say they came out here to the house, and they said, "Okay, we've been out. We've come out to your house, and we've had cake and you know hot apple cider. Now it's Christmas. Well, this year it's weird here at our house because." Of the floor situation but you know what it's christmas and we're going to celebrate and we're going to be glad let's see angela did a wonderful job decorating as usual yes yeah i think betty harris helped her um betty if you are angela would give me a thumbs up i, I know she had some help but um wow she does angela's just an amazing person anyway such an amazing real heart real heart for ministry so uh, tonight, we're going to start out with praise and worship, and we're going to give thanks to our God. I read today on Facebook that praise and worship is not the first 20 minutes of the service while you're singing. That praise and worship is when you come together, and when you join your hearts together, and you, you start to lay all of this day aside. Maybe you've been busy, maybe you've been at work, maybe you've been shopping, maybe you've been ill. But we're going to take all of these things, and we're going to lay them down for a little while. And we're just going to give God thanks. We're going to give him thanksgiving. We're going to give him praise tonight. Father, in the name oh, of Jesus, you. we come before you tonight oh, with thanksgiving you, and praise thank in our you. hearts. Father, I thank you for touching Linda's Heart family. Full of thanksgiving. For Diane's family being completely <clears throat> healed. Lord, we're thanking you that I thank you for bringing oh, Carolyn you. through this surgery and that she's now safe and resting. And God, I thank you for guiding the surgeon's hands. Lord, these who are having blood work done and lab work done, Lord, we thank you in advance for the good reports that are going to come through. Oh, hallelujah. For hallelujah. these biopsies that are having to happen. Lord, we thank you and we praise your name that you are touching, that you are healing. We thank you, God, tonight. We thank you for this wonderful season we thank you for our country yes, we thank you for our leadership we thank you for the lives that you have allowed us to be uh, in association with and lord tonight we pray we pray we pray that you would give us hearts that are grateful that you would lift up our heads and lord that because of you we can smile because of you we can be glad because of you we can rejoice because of you we can be joyful because Hallelujah, you have written Lord. in your word so crazy, many ways, so Lord. many times, how we can come before you into your presence, into <clears> your <throat> presence, Lord. And as we do that tonight, mm. we do so dancing and singing Hallelujah. and rejoicing and clapping our hands and lifting our hands. And Lord, we pray tonight that you would fill our mouths with your words, that you would fill our mouths with your spirit, that you would fill our hearts and our heads with God. Tonight, we pray that you would fill the atmosphere you, of Father. everywhere we are. Lord, that you would change the atmosphere of everywhere we are. Lord, that you would come in like a fresh anointing. That you would come in like a breeze, like a beautiful, calm breeze, and just blow into our Hallelujah, lives. Lord. Bring us strength. Lord, even though we are feeling anxious at this time, 
I thank you, Lord, that we can come before you and that we can bow before you and we can humble ourselves before you, Lord. And we can thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for giving us a sound mind. We thank you, Lord, for our families. Father, we thank you that you are continuing to give us abundance, that you're giving, giving us provision. I thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for all of the people that you have put into our lives. I thank you, Lord, for giving the opportunity to all of us to witness, to testify, to shine forth your light in this dark world. We thank you tonight, Lord for the joy unspeakable that flows through our veins. Yes, the Lord. joy that we, that causes us to raise our hands, that causes our voices to shout out. We cannot be silent tonight, Lord, because we praise your name. We come before you with thanksgiving. We come into your courts with praise. Tonight, mm -hmm. Lord, tonight, Lord, we thank you. We just lay down our petitions right now, and we just raise our hands, and we thank you. We just raise our voices and we thank you. We raise our hearts and our spirits, Lord, tonight. And we thank you. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we rejoice and we are glad tonight because we have come into your presence, because we are allowed into your presence. Mm. Pray mm -hmm. these things tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name, we give you give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory. Let's just give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. Of praise, right? Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you. And we'll bring a sacrifice of praise into, into the, the house of the Lord. We'll bring a sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy. And we'll bring a sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We'll bring a sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you, to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy. I change that last word every time, so that's why Jan dropped out there at the uh -huh. last second. Because hey, I'm not sure. I'm just she's small, not sure. <laughs> But you know whether it's a sacrifice of praise or a sacrifice of joy, we're giving it up, right? We're giving it up. I mean, we are giving that thing up. Give it up for Jesus. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> we're just praising him and thanking him. You know, uh, Steve, uh, last Sunday, wow, what a powerful Sunday we had last Sunday. But Steve was talking about uh, our prayer being not just, uh, in his words, mamby pamby prayer, yeah. not just lukewarm prayer. Yeah. Uh, but prayer that reaches up to God, prayer that God is interested in. Because when you're passionate, when you are when you are truly praying, God is interested in that prayer. Yeah. Um, years and years ago, uh, when we lived in Cleveland. There was a, <clears throat> it's a long time ago. There's a million this years ago. year, we've been here 39 years at National Church of God. Church National Church of God has been our home and the home for our children and where our kids got married and where our grandkids have been growing up for 39 years. When we moved up here, Mike was six months old. Yeah, he was an infant. Yeah, six he was months an old. Oh gosh, that's impossible to believe. That it seems like a whole nother lifetime. I was thirty when we moved up here. Jan was twenty-eight when we moved up here. Those were different people <laughs> than we are now. But before we moved up here, we were at our home church and a missionary came and he was preaching. And he said that he had recently been to a church 
where a young woman who uh, suffered seizures um, had a had a seizure, and people started gathering around her, and that you know they were just they were just praying, you know they were calling on God, and then she started to bleed from her ears and around her eyes, and Brother McDaniel said it suddenly became a very passionate, a very fervent prayer. Serious. Very serious. And somebody had called an ambulance, but before the ambulance came, all of the men and the women had gathered around that young woman and had begun to pray, and that thing lifted from her. She, they still took her to the hospital just to check her out, but that thing lifted from her, yeah. and she was okay. She Obviously, she survived it. And I'm going to tell you, when, when we get passionate about what we're praying about, Mm -hmm. When we're not just giving our list. You know, this time of year, we talk about lists a lot. So, um, our granddaughter, Alistair, she sent us her list uh, the other night. And uh, she was so excited because it was her first uh, official Christmas list to send to the two of us. And um, she, had, uh, she had a bunch of stuff on there, just odds and ends stuff. But then she had something very specific. Something very specific. Oh, very it was specific. even a specific <laughs> color, and that's exactly what she wanted. And so, um, of course, we kept searching. Well, I kept searching. Mike was helping me look, and we found just that exact perfect thing. And I'm going to tell you, when Alistair opens that present, she's just going to be so excited. When you're passionate about something, when you're passionate about something, you're excited. You're excited. I mean, I, I'm telling you, when when Steve started praying, well, he started this, uh, he calls it atomic prayer. Uh, last Friday night, when he started praying that, man, that thing just got down in my spirit. And it's just, it just boils and bubbles and, and it's like living waters in my belly. When we become passionate about the things we're praying for. Yeah. In other words, if somebody says, will you pray for me? And then you say, oh, yeah, I'll pray for you. But you don't. Know, you forget about it. That's why most of the time, gent, when people ask us to pray, they'll call us and say, "Hey, I need for you to uh, uh, put me on your prayer list for so and so." Yeah, yeah. And most of the time, uh, most of the time, we say, "Well, let's stop right now. Yeah. Let's pray for this thing. Let's yeah. start." the process why wait 24 hours right. to start the process start the warfare against the enemy right now in fact let me let me bring something up have you ever had somebody leading prayer in a in a group setting or leading prayer over you or you were praying for someone and it sounded like the prayer was coming just as an automatic response from the mind of the person praying. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like it had any roots. It didn't feel like it was sincere. It didn't feel as though there was any power in it. That prayer barely makes it to the ceiling. Right. It, it does not go to the throne room of God because... Our prayer, I believe, every prayer we pray should be passionate. Amen. It, it should be. It, it's like something I started uh, in the church maybe 15 years ago, which was everything we do has to be on purpose. When you give, you give on purpose. That's why we started that uh, uh, thing at the end, the mm -hmm. the uh, proclamation. The proclamation. That's why we started the proclamation at the end of the uh, the preparation to give. Is because we want to make sure that we are giving on purpose. Don't just give and let it sit there. You give with a purpose. And Lord, here's the purposes for which I am giving today. And um, let me just mention that with uh, uh, so many people out of town this past week, 
if you did not have a chance to give this week, we, we're going to ask you to do that because um, our, our income for the church was down this past week. And so if you did not have an opportunity to give, please take care of that. Givelify is so perfect. You, you can set that up one time and, and just give to your heart's content. But uh, we give on purpose. It's not just an automatic response. Even if you are giving the same amount each week, you still take that amount and you say, Lord, I'm giving this not to National Church. I'm giving it through National Church. Amen. I'm giving it because I know they're not just putting it in some account and laying up treasures here on earth. They're laying up my treasure in heaven. And that's why we have to be very uh, particular about where we give, but we have to be very purposeful in why we give. Didn't mean to take over. No. No, you had it. So tonight, we're going to join together. And we're going to be passionate. We're yeah. going to be, have the intention when we are praying. Let me just remind you something that Janice started that I, I talked about last week. Prayer is not only communication with God. You see, that's what we that's what we even preach. We say, "Oh, this is this is how you talk to God," and it's not it's not even just a one way thing. It's a two way conversation with God, but it's more than that. It's actually a three way conversation because the enemy overhears what you're saying to God, what you are pronouncing into the spirit, and it becomes a confrontation to the enemy. Do you want to confront the enemy for what he's doing to you in a particular area? Pray to God, pray out loud, and he will be overhearing the mm -hmm. confrontation that you are bringing against him. It is a confrontational. It, it is mighty. It is powerful. It is awesome. It is the power of God wrapped up in the words you speak back and forth to the Lord. Um, some will pray in tongues. Others, others will pray all in English. It does not matter. Pray even if you're praying in, in English or your native language, pray in the Spirit of God. Pray knowing that God is hearing what you're saying, yes, but more than that, the devil is hearing what you're saying. Satan is being confronted. When Jesus was on the earth, he came face to face with the devil when he was tempted in the wilderness. And and the and that face to face confrontation, how did it end? It ended each of those times by the Lord Jesus Christ taking authority over him by quoting the word That's right. of God. That's right. The word of God is your biggest tool against the enemy. I've I've heard I've heard preachers say, Oh, you know, you don't have to memorize scripture. You don't have to uh, uh, be able to quote the Bible uh, in order to get your prayers through. Well, I don't think you have to, but you know what? I think it, I think it enables your prayer. When you send a letter, it, it may have been a long time since you've sent a letter, but when you send a letter, you address it to the person you want to receive it. When you send a letter, you don't just write a letter, put it in the mail, and hope that somehow it's going to get there. No, you know what you do? You address it to that person so that the, the, the delivery system knows where it goes, who it goes to, 
and they, they're the ones that take it there. Your prayers need to be addressed to God, to Jesus, to the Holy Spirit. Your prayers need to be, need to be addressed to the triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, because they're the ones that created all that is and can recreate what is necessary to fulfill your prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you go ahead and, and lead us in prayer? All right. And I, then I'll then I'll get my head ready to okay. pray some of the what I call atomic prayer. Let me let me just tell you all. Uh, we just got. Uh, I just got a, a text from Maria Riley, and we need to really be praying about her husband's kidney situation. Yeah. It says he has kidney disease and may have to start dialysis the end of next year or the beginning of 2022. We have an evaluation with Georgetown Hospital to, to get on the donor's list for a kidney. Listen, God can heal that kidney. Absolutely. We are going to be believing. We're going to be praying. We're going to be holding on with you, Maria. The saints of God, listen, we need to really raise Cain. We need to really... Let our petition be yeah. known yeah. for Brother Riley. Yeah. For yeah. touching his body, for healing that kidney. And if it's God's will that he gets a donor, that's wonderful. But if it's God's will that he's just going to heal it like he's going to heal it, then we'll take that too. You know, a few years ago, yeah. we had a, a gentleman that was diagnosed with kidney disease and he had to have dialysis twice a week, yeah. every week. Yeah. They put him on the list to receive a kidney. And, and they said, as soon as you get a call from us, uh, uh, that's back when we used pagers, uh, as soon as you get a page from us, respond to it because that means we will have your new kidney. And one day he was... He was uh, doing something, and he got a text. Uh, he got a page. I've almost forgotten how pagers worked. It's so long ago now. He got a beeper. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and they said, you need to come to the hospital immediately. He, he told his family, this is it. This is it. And, and they got him in the car. They got him down there, and he went walking in. His doctor met him there, and his doctor said, um, uh, I hope this didn't get your, your um, expectations up because I have you here not for what you may think. He said the tests over the last two weeks that we have taken of your kidneys those tests have come back and your kidneys have gone from 20% to 90%. You, you're, you have increased, what is that, 70%? Yeah, yeah. And, and we think the way it's moving that you'll go to 100%. Yeah. They said, they said we're taking you off the kidney list we are not taking you into a kidney uh, transplant. We are taking you off the list because you don't need it. Let me tell you, God can take you off the list. So he I'm, can take you yeah. off of Satan's hit list. Yes. He can, he can take you off the list and put you in right relationship with your body, with your mind, with your spirit, in right relationship with God, and you, He can heal you just as well as He can have a uh, donor show up. Yeah. And so, because He created you in the first place, and He can recreate you. Hallelujah. All I'm right. Sorry. Go so ahead. we're going to be praying for Brother Riley tonight for that kidney situation. Yeah. And and I mean, I want us all to pray. As though this was our own husband, our own son, our own child. Yeah. We're going to be praying for Brother Riley tonight. 
We're also going to be praying for Frida tonight. We're going to lift Frida up. She's having trouble with her knees. And this, of course, Frida's in Florida, but they're having cold weather right now in Florida. Yeah. We're going to be pray and we're going to believe. We're also going to be praying for, uh, let's see, um, I just got that tick. No, it's from Barbara. Uh, and I think she's having surgery. It's, it's hard for us to see it when it's in the comments. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to be praying for Jim. I believe that was a request for Jim. Uh, Barbara, if that's not correct, put that on there one more time so I can... Or send it to you. Yeah. So we're going to be... 202-437-6594. That's Janice. Right. So uh, we're going to be praying for uh, Jim tonight, whatever that uh, situation is. We're going to continue to pray for Frances Krause, uh, Barbara's mother, and believe that God will heal her and touch her and deliver her. We're also going to continue to pray for uh, Aisha White. She had her little boy this week. Yeah. Uh, we were over there on Thursday taking a Thanksgiving turkey, and on Saturday, she sent me a text, and we're just texting back and forth, and I said, are you hungry? Is there something I can bring you? And and she said, uh, oh, no, I'm at the hospital. I'm getting, ready, <laughs> I'm getting ready to have the baby. They won't let me have anything to eat. And I was like, why didn't you lead with that? But she's home. He's home. His name is Benjamin, so beautiful name. It goes, uh, Jeremiah, she has Jeremiah and Brianna, uh, Isaiah and now Benjamin and so uh, beautiful beautiful little family uh, that's, a, that's a lot of little people and we know because we have <laughs> four so we know we know so uh, tonight we're going to be I'm glad that was several years ago now yeah I'll be too it would kill me now <laughs> you know when we were talking a while ago about if somebody calls us uh, the other night uh, I got a call about somebody who was requesting prayer and uh, I, you know, I was just sitting over here in, in our den, which is full of furniture, but mm -hmm. I'm sitting over here in our den and uh, Jack, stacked up furniture. Yeah, Jack was here, our grandson Jack and Steve, of course, was here and the workers were in there finishing up uh, whatever they were doing on the floor that particular day. And as I started to pray, the whole house just became... You know, a house of prayer, a, a place of prayer. Because prayer changes the atmosphere. It does. It absolutely just changes where we are and, and how we feel. And, and it goes forth and it touches the people that you're praying for. Yes, absolutely. But it also, it just changes the person who's praying. And it changes the atmosphere. It changes, it just changes everything about us. So let me see. Oh, I thought that was... I thought that was another prayer request. So tonight, we want you to join us in prayer and, and uh, join us wherever, however you feel uh, most comfortable, whether it be on your knees uh, or Frida, just put both hands on your knees. Maria, put your hands on your husband's kidneys. Diane, we are thanking God that there is healing in your family. Healing in your family. God wherever you is completely need healing. blessed. Yes. Place your hands there as That's a point right. of contact. And so if it if, if you have unsaved children or, or unsaved family members, just, let's just put our hands on our hearts tonight. And we're just going to pray. And so, Steve, if you would lead us in that prayer. Before he starts, let me remind you that in just a few minutes, we're going to be taking communion. Yeah. So if you need to grab the elements, do that, please. So One point of instruction first. Yes. In all prayer... As you pray, the first thing you need to do is to establish the authority by which you are praying. Yes. Is it in your name? That's not very powerful if it is. Or is it in the name and the authority of Jesus Christ, of God Almighty, the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the power God the Father is the administrator and Jesus Christ is the authority of your prayers. And so establish the authority before you start going to God Amen. with with any kind of demands or any kind of prayer, anything along that line. 
So let's Jesus. let's take a moment, just clear our minds, mm. clear our hearts. Mm. Let the Holy Spirit move between us. Yes, yes. Join us together, Holy Spirit. Join us, Jesus. With all of those who are on the line right now, Lord, join us together by way of the Holy Spirit right now. That, Lord, it's not by our might. It's not by our power. But it is by your Spirit says the Lord. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you that you have given us the authority to pray and to believe and know. Father, we thank you. We thank you for what you have done for us. We thank you that you did not leave us weaponless against a, an evil spirit, but you gave us powerful weapons our weapons are powerful and they're mighty. They're mightier than any two-edged sword. And we just thank you, Father, that you gave to us weapons against the enemy. We come against the enemy in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the Holy Spirit, the authority of El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh. We come to you by faith, believing. We come to you knowing that all things are possible through you, through Jesus Christ, through the name of Jesus. You left us the name, the blood, and the prayer of faith to come against the enemy, and we thank you for that. I arise to establish the legal right and dominion over this region, this city, this house. I have dominion over this house. And Satan, you are not privileged to be here. We thank you. We thank you. Every territory that is under our jurisdiction. I claim authority in it and over it right now in the name of Jesus. According to Daniel 9 and 4, you are the only, the one, the only, the great and dreadful God. You are great to us. And when it comes to the enemy, you are a dreadful foe to him. Keeping the covenant and the mercy to them that love you and to them that keep your commandments. I appeal to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And as it says in 2 Chronicles 7, 13 through 16, if my people if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves can confess their sins lord i confess anything that would stand between me and, and you lord right now in the name of jesus burn it up i confess my sins before you i confess the sins of my fathers let your grace and mercy prevail over us right now. I declare I have free passage. There is an open heaven for my prayers to ascend into the realm of the supernatural. And I will not be earthbound with my prayer. God is hearing our prayers right now. Everyone on this line, he can hear your prayer right now. I am seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Therefore, I war from a place and from a plane and from that realm. I, I am not doing this warfare for victory. I'm doing it from the location of victory. I am in victory, and I claim the power 
of Christ. I declare that the anointing of God breaks every yoke, opens every portal, and assigns angels to reinforce me and carry my prayers into the throne room of God as I advance into new levels of prayer, new dimensions, new realms, and new territories. Let there be a breakthrough in the heavens tonight. Let there be breakthrough in the heavens tonight. Take us through the covering, the detours of the enemy. Take us through the shields and the barriers that he tries to create. And we come against you, Satan. We come against you in the name of Jesus because you are defeated. We already have the victory yes, over we you do. and yes, we, we claim do. that yes, victory. Hallelujah. Right now Hallelujah. in the name of Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Satan, you are defeated. Satan, you are yes, you our are. enemy. Yes. And you are defeated. And, you, and we bring Thank the you, weapons Jesus. of our Thank warfare, you, which are not carnal, yeah, but they are yeah, mighty yeah, through yeah, God to the pulling oh, down yeah, yeah, of yeah, your yeah, stronghold. Yeah, yeah. Lord, Jesus, we thank Jesus, you. Jesus. We thank you. We establish our authority here tonight. The authority to pray. The authority to believe. The authority to stand and having done all to stand, stand therefore. We have the authority to stand against the enemy. Father, we pray that you will give to us. Give to us a response out of the spiritual world into our presence, into our mind, into our spirit, that the enemy will know that you have heard us. Yes. The enemy will know Yes. that you have heard us. Just like Moses said, when, when God told him, I'm not going to go with you, he said, then I'm not going anywhere because how will the people of this world know that you are for us if you are not with us? Go with us, God. Go with us into the camp of the enemy. Destroy the enemy. Break the enemy's back. Destroy, uh, destroy those things the enemy has been trying to do to come against your people. Yes. Give to us tonight breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, right now, we pray that you would touch Brother Rodney. Yes. Lord, that you would go into his kidneys yes. and that you would completely heal his kidneys, Lord. Yes, Go Lord. into the root of that situation and completely heal his kidneys tonight, Lord. We pray tonight for Frances Krause. Mm -hmm. Lord, that you would give her a long life and that you would crush this cancer that is trying to invade her body. Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we're praying for Frida's knees tonight. We're praying for Sabrina Williams tonight, Lord. All of these requests that have come before you tonight, in the name of Jesus, we're praying and we are believing yes, in Father. Jesus' name. Yes, we Father. know that you can. We know that you are willing. And so now, Lord, we're standing and we're waiting. And we're holding our brothers and our sisters mm -hmm. before you. And we're praying those things. Lord, these who have lost loved ones this week oh, and last Lord. week, Lord, we pray that you would go into those families, that you would that you would comfort those families, that you would raise them up, and that you would touch their hearts, Lord, and that you would that you would give them sweet, sweet memories and sweet, sweet comfort during this time of loss. Lord, we are praising you that their loved ones are dancing before you right yes, now, Lord. that they are whole and that they are healed and they are no longer in the bondage of a sick body. But, Lord, they are walking and shouting and rejoicing, and they are glad and in your presence. But, Lord, those of us who are, who are grieving here on earth, I pray, Lord, that you would touch our hearts, that you would touch our spirits, and that you would hold on to us, Lord, with your everlasting arms of protection. For we are standing on holy ground, and I know that there
there are angels all around. Let us praise our Jesus now, for we are standing in his presence on holy ground. The Lord told Moses, Take off your shoes, for this is holy ground. Lord, where your saints are is holy ground. Lord, where you reside is holy ground. We are your tabernacle. Tabernacle among us. Minister to us and through us and for us and in us. Use us, Lord. For we are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. For we are standing in his presence on holy ground. We serve an awesome, awesome God. Awesome God. Our communion is holy. Our our the elements of our communion are the body and the blood of Jesus. We are on holy ground when we participate in the holy communion. He said, be ye holy as I am holy. And my first response to that was, even years ago, Father, I'm I'm not holy. I, I am a mere man. How can I be holy? But I take him at his word. I, he said, you be holy as I am holy. What makes that easier to believe is the basic meaning that we started understanding about six years ago, which is holy means accurate. He says, you be accurate as I am accurate. Anytime God ever shoots at a target, he hits it. Everything he aims to do, you know, sometimes we'll say that, well, I aim to do that. You don't hear that much up here, but <laughs> we did in Cleveland. Well, I aim to do that. Well, my, my aunt says that. I aim to do that, Steve. Whatever we aim at, we have to be extra cautious that we are accurate with our aim. There's so much that has to be taken into account. Mm -hmm when you're aiming. Otherwise, you will hit someone else. That's right. Sometimes you'll shoot your own self in the foot. What you got? Okay, so uh, I actually got a text from Barbara. Thank you, Barbara. It says they found two polyps on Jim's gallbladder. Pray they are gone on Tuesday for the MRI. In mm. Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight, as we take the communion together, I love, I love that when Steve told me that communion means communion. Yeah. That completely changed it for me. 
it's like it's like having dinner with someone. It is. It's a common union. It is coming in, coming into unity with with others. And so tonight I have our elements on this beautiful Christmas dish that Mary Gillum gave us last year. She gave us this wonderful set of Christmas dishes and. I'm so, so, so thankful. I'm so grateful to that because every time I look at these dishes, every time I look at these dishes, and I keep my dishes out all the time, not just seasonal, but every time I look at these dishes, I just say thank God for Mary Gillum. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to tell them what Maya said. No, you have to tell everything you have Yeah, to I do. She was over here and she was, since we're having our floors done, Maya came over and helped us carry stuff out of the dining room cabinets into the den and stack them up in the den so that they can move the furniture around in there without breaking stuff. It took three teenagers an hour. <laughs> yeah. And and there were about just a guess. How, now, I, don't, I, don't, I don't How many sets? How many sets of how many sets of dishes were in there? Jack said, Nanny, you have Christmas dishes. It, then he got, you know, in the flesh. He said, you've got Hanukkah dishes. You've got every Jewish holiday <laughs> dishes, he said. And plus, you've got all these other dishes. And uh, so then Maya took a picture of it. And I said, you better not post that. Of course, I didn't know her grandfather was going to tell it. And <clears throat> and then she said, Nanny, you have a problem. You have a real problem. You have a real problem. <laughs> and I do. But I love all these dishes. I just, I do. I love I love beautiful dishes. I don't think it's against the law, Jan, to be addicted to dishes. It's not like I'm spending my money on them. People give them to me, so. Yeah, yeah. So I'm happy. You know? And at least maybe three or four of them are your mom's and, and my your mom's, mom's. Right, yeah. and your grandmother Woodard's. Yeah. So, um, so, we... so I thank God <laughs> for Mary Gillum for giving me these gorgeous yep. Christmas dishes. I mean, all the little pieces to it. But I'm going to tell you that there are things as I look around my house and as as I as I'm looking at your names uh, coming up on the screen, I just give thanks for you. I'm just yeah. so grateful for you, and I'm so glad that we can come into common union because it's one thing to just be friends with people or to, to be cousins with somebody. It's another thing to come into communion with them and to what makes enjoy the peace of God with them. What makes this dish so important? Yeah. It's not because it's a Christmas dish. It's because of the person yeah. who gave them to and us. And she's gathered those. She's collected those, she said, for years. And so yeah. as we come together tonight to take this communion together, I'm going to tell you, uh, maybe I've never been in your home or you've never been in mine or maybe that's never going to happen but when we get to heaven we're going to say during the pandemic we took communion together yeah. and taking communion together it brought us in alignment with one another and, and with Jesus Christ because this is one of the things he said this is I want you to do this I want you to take this bread and every time you lift up this bread, every time you sit down to eat, I want you to do it in remembrance of me. I want you to think about me because this is the time truly of your deliverance, of your salvation. And so as we lift up the bread, we do so because on that night, before Jesus was going to be taken and crucified, he gathered together with his 12 closest friends. Yeah. Now, one of those would go on to betray him that night. Mm -hmm. But as they gathered together, they were in union, common union with one another. And common union with Jesus Christ. And that's what we're doing. There's more than 12 of us gathered around this table tonight. But we're gathering together in common union. And that's where the word community comes from. Oh, he's a wealth of information. So it's Trivia. As we gather together on this night, we lift up the bread or the cracker or whatever it is that, that you're taking communion in. We lift that up. And I'm just going to say, I thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank Jesus, you. for your life. Thank you. Thank you for your body. In Christ's name.
Thank Amen. you for offering, and we we gratefully accept. Yes. And now as we lift up the juice, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, it heals everything. It changes everything. So as you lift up your juice, Father, I'm so thankful for the healing power that flows through our veins because of you. For the healing power that touches our minds. Hallelujah. For the healing power that goes into our kidneys, into our hearts, into our digestive system, into our respiratory system, into our skeletal system, into our muscles, into every part and fiber of our body, but also into our spiritual body, into our emotional body, into our mind, because your blood changes everything in our lives. And Lord, we pray right now that every person under the sound of my voice right now is being healed from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Amen. Every issue, every problem. Amen. Arthritis, you have to go Amen. in the name of Jesus. Pain, you are not welcome. And we claim a cleansing by the blood of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Marlene, I've really had Jackie on my mind. I just believe that God is going to completely heal Jackie. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you've got Carol blood. It doesn't. And and I know they say with Carol blood, you know, heart situations and other situations, but this is the blood of Jesus. We are breaking that curse. Yep. And I'm believing complete healing. Complete yep. healing. Yeah. In my complete. sweet cousin Jackie. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow morning we will have Bible study at ten o'clock. We will be taking communion. And then Sunday morning, let me let me say this. If you can possibly come into the sanctuary, Sunday morning, it's just going to be so glorious because it's just the presence of the Lord is so powerful in that sanctuary right now. And now that Angela's got it looking so gorgeous, you should come. Please come. Please. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> I'm showing it to you again. That's what it looks like. But you have to see it for yourself. And I want you there experiencing. I, I was thinking tonight as Steve was singing that while I'm up on the stage and I'm, and I'm uh, uh, during praise and worship, um, Hannah Fro stands over there closest to us. She's still, what, 10 feet away or more, I guess. Oh, more now. We've got on a mask, of course, and everything. But let me just tell you, let me just tell you this. Normally when I stand on the stage, I'm standing besides Steve, and, and then other pastors are around me, and uh, I'm a little I'm a little bashful about singing out. Not too bashful, but a little bit. But while we're up there wearing those masks, and we're all so positioned apart, and let me just tell you, our praise and worship team, oh my Amazing. goodness. Amazing. They have reached the throne of heaven before they ever step out there and, and reach for a microphone, and it can, you can tell, it makes a difference. It's just so yeah. glorious, but I have just been standing over there singing with Hannah, with my mask on, just as loud as I can, and, and oh my goodness, just rejoice and praise God as though nobody can hear you or mm -hmm. is watching, because really nobody's interested in you right now. Yeah. So come, be in our sanctuary. Praise and worship starts at 8.50, and then the service uh, follows right after that. You can watch it on YouTube. You can watch it on Facebook. You can watch it on live stream, uh, NCOG Live. 
You can watch it on Zoom. Oh, that's right. And be you a can part watch of it, it on Zoom. And let me tell you the number. Write this down. Write this down. 601-573-5738. And that is the Zoom account. And the password is all caps worship. All, all caps, caps worship. And then you Give can the be number again. 601-573-5738. Join us. Join us. It is so powerful. It is so wonderful. Or you can come in live. Or you can come in and be right there with us. You can be right there with us in the service. So we've got uh, this Sunday and then two more Sundays before Christmas. And um, I'm just, I'm telling you, I am finally, it took me a minute to get there, but I am really into this spirit of Christmas. I'm so excited. So excited. So excited to see you. So I will see you all tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock for Bible study. But then I will see all of you who are local, not loco, local, <laughs> uh, Sunday morning. Are you? Maybe you're a little bit loco. Yeah. Even if you're a little bit loco, come in. Crazy. So Linda has been there. And Terry, has, she's there on the same, uh, in person. And you're going to love it. It's safe. If it wasn't safe, I wouldn't be there myself. Trust me, I would not. I'm being very careful. And so, uh, but it's safe and your social distance and the, you get a free temperature check. Free temperature check. We do not charge for that. And you get to see the beautiful uh, sights and sounds that Angela Roberts has produced in our sanctuary. And I'm so thankful for her. Yep. Father, I thank you for this day and for this time together. I thank you that we can come together and celebrate communion yes, together. Lord. Now, Lord, I pray that you would give us a safe night. Those who are traveling, a good journey home, or wherever their destination is. Lord, I thank you for the freedom that we have to come together and worship you. In Christ's and a name. great day tomorrow. Yes. God, God bless, bless you. you guys. All right. Okay, now I'm going to try to find it. There it is.